Good evening. Let's get started on our prayer meeting and thank God for the day that God has given to us. So let's get started by singing uh, Jesus Paid It All. Number 8. <clears throat> Jesus Paid It All. I hear sing. I hear the Savior say. Thy strength indeed is small, child of weakness, watch and pray, find in me thine all in all. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin has left the crimson stain, he was it white as snow. For nothing good have I, whereby thy grace to claim. I was my garments white in the blood of every stand Jesus paid it all all to him I owe sin had left a crimson stain he was it white as snow last and when before the throne, I stand in Him complete. Jesus died my soul to save, my lips shall still repeat. Jesus paid it all, all to Him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he was it white as snow. In his time, in his time, sing, in his time, in his time, he makes all things beautiful. In His time, Lord, please show me every day as You're teaching me Your way that You do just what You say in Your time, in Your time, in time. You make all things beautiful in your time. Lord, my life to you I bring. May each song I have to sing be to you a lovely thing. In your time. Okay, let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for <clears throat> the whole day through. Um, first, we thank you uh, for the great salvation that has been given and provided to us, uh, to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you for the forgiveness of our sins. Thank you for the promise of life eternal and uh, thank you also for the day-to-day -day provisions to our needs uh, you have been so faithful protecting your children and to those who are able to get back to their respective home again we would like to thank you to those who are watching father we pray that you would uh, prepare their hearts and their minds and uh, we pray, Holy Spirit, that you would be the one to illumine their understanding, their minds, 
that they might understand the truth and be kept and be applied in their Christian life. Lord, we thank you for those who are watching. Perhaps they might uh, they are not saved yet, praying that, that they might come to know Christ as their personal Savior. And thank you also, Father, for this time and the privilege that you have given to us. Uh, indeed, um, it is our joy to worship you, to serve you, and uh, praying, Father, to those who are watching with us also that they might be singing together as we continue this prayer meeting of ours. We know you are in our midst, and we are standing and sitting on the holy ground. Lord, we love you, and uh, bless the remaining time of our worship service for you. In Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Okay, so good evening, and I'm back, and uh, thank you for the prayers of uh, our brothers and our sisters uh, so far. Uh, it's uh, pretty well getting so soon, uh, by God's grace, and uh, Lord willing, I'll be joining you this coming Sunday, and uh, also to those pastors and other members who are watching. Um, in the Philippines, India, and somewhere else, I would like to thank you for uh, the prayers <clears throat> that has been offered to the Lord for me, and I uh, thank God for that. So far, it has been so successful, uh, but I wasn't allowed to, I'm not allowed to, at least for a while, uh, to carry more than 10 pounds and take care of myself, at least for two to three consecutive weeks, uh, not to carry anything uh, as too heavy. So thank you again. So let's keep praying for our church uh, services. We thank God for our members who were there last uh, Sunday <clears throat> and uh, the choir that they were able to uh, at least uh, sing and uh, Remember those who are also uh, physically ill uh, and sick, whoever may, and uh, pray also for uh, Carrie, the one that uh, Sister Bridgie is taking care of it. Uh, she was brought uh, to the urgent, urgent, care. urgent care, and uh, hopefully she will be doing well. And uh, to those who are sick still, keep on praying for them. And uh, thank you for um, those who are bringing food. I guess second Sunday would be the second group who would be the one to bring food. And uh, don't forget uh, to bring whatever may that uh, uh, you can. Yeah, kasasabi ko na. And also we have a uh, Bible study uh, in Culver City. Uh, Brother Lee would be the one to take care of it. And Pastor Joe and others might be joining. Hopefully I can make it, but if not, I'll just take a rest at least, you know. So other things, uh, we send some of our support to our missionaries. And uh, next week, I will be sending all the supports of all the missionaries. So to those of you who are continuously being blessed of God in uh, meeting the needs for the missionaries, please do so your tithes and your offerings. And uh, we thank God. Uh, last week, not only this week, uh, we were able to help uh, one project in uh, Kirino province uh, for their building and I sent some of it and another thing I might be sending also for the project of all these buildings because I'm more burdened to those uh, people who were given and donated property to their uh, church uh, these uh, uh, I would say uh, dedication of God's people and yet in spite of their uh, financial incapacity they have some properties and they gave it to the church 
wherein they can uh, construct their building. So at least a minimal amount that we can uh, extend help to them. So if you are being blessed, um, do so, no problem. And uh, again, also I have my thanksgiving to God uh, for what has been done. So those are the things that we do share. Uh, you know, uh, it is life. It's a gift from God. So don't uh, don't you dare to be uh, more adamant of you know sharing the gifts that God has given to you. You should be believing in gift because. Christ himself is the better gift in John 3, 16, for God shall love the world that he gave his only begotten son. So you understand that. And uh, again, uh, pray for our uh, frontliners still, the doctors, nurses, police officers, and our leaders all over the world. As I always remind you in the book of Proverbs, the kingdom is the Lord and is the governor of every nation. Also in the Philippines, uh, we know that the uh, election is so soon, this coming May. May God be the one to put uh, the right uh, leader uh, for the uh, government of the Philippines, as well as here in our country, in America. And uh, as we have said, I've said already, carries to be prayed. Uh, we are praying for him, uh, for her. So, so Pray for our Sunday school. I encourage you, please come early. And you would be blessed. You would be informed and learn a lot of things rather than take over again. So please do so. And uh, the choir, pray for them. And for uh, Sister Joy, thank you for her dedication uh, to the Lord's work in leading our choir. And also for those who are helping, Brother Gabby and um, others uh, with regards to our congregation and cleaning and um, Carlo and others, um, thank God for that. And also Pastor Joe for the afternoon service and thank you also for uh, filling uh, the Sunday morning service last Sunday and Sunday afternoon. So. Pray continuously for uh, those who are still looking for a job. I would say pray much, ask the Lord to give you the, the wisdom and the calmness and uh, the right direction uh, because you can only know God's will when God gives you peace of mind and that's the way it is. And also pray for those who are uh, taking care of their master degrees uh, in the Philippines, I would be assuming the class next week. So I told them I don't have class uh, last week and this week, but next week I'm gonna get started. If you are watching by Monday, we have not class again to get started. Okay, so don't forget on that. So I guess that's all, and uh, if you know something, that needs to be prayed for. Please include them to your personal prayer life after your devotion and your communication with God. Okay? So I guess that's all. Let's sing that song. Uh, Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Sing. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation so rich and free. Okay, to those who are watching with us and joining us, again, uh, let's turn our Bible in the book of Matthew. Uh, chapter 5, I guess last Wednesday, I'm also here anyway, right? Yeah. Last Wednesday. Uh, Matthew chapter 5, we're done on uh, verse 10. Now we are on verse uh, 11 and 12, verses 11 and 12. 
and uh, the Bible says in uh, verses 11 and uh, uh, 12, uh, Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely. And then it says, For my sake, rejoice and be exceeding glad for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. And uh, may God be the one to uh, bless his word as we continue our studies. Again, as a reminder, the entire topic or subject of Matthew 5, 6, and 7. It's all about the, uh, we are the under eye seeing of our Heavenly Father from day to day, which has a similarity in the book of Ecclesiastes as we studied uh, in the past, last year and also early this month of 2022. And uh, since you and I, uh, we are under the eye seeing of our Heavenly Father, and everything is all uh, naked before the eye seeing of our Heavenly Father. So that would give us uh, thinking and thoughts that whatever you do, whether privately or whether uh, publicly, whether being known to others, noticed by others or not, all these things are all known to our Heavenly Father. So that would help us to be more cautious. Things that we say, things that we do, things that we decide. And that would make us also not only to be cautious, but to be conscious of our behavior as well as our attitude. Because the truth of the matter is um, whatever happens around us and uh, before us, um, any circumstance and any situation it does affect us just to make you happy to make you comfortable or seemingly there's a threat and other things it's all mixed up negative and positive and this is where your uh, maturity and uh, our maturity and our spirituality is to be seen by our heavenly father it is possible because the bible tells us since the time that we got saved, we are being indwelt by the Holy Spirit of God. And since we are indwelt by the Holy Spirit of God, as it has been stated in the book of Galatians 5, the works of the flesh after that in verse 20 and 21, the fruit of the Spirit. I always reiterate and remind every believer, since I believe that you are no longer naive, and you are no longer a new uh, believer. Um, you have been a believer for quite long. You know, read the Word of God, heard the preachings, and personally you have your personal devotion uh, about God's Word. So I believe uh, that you know a lot of things uh, from the Scripture, uh, from the Word of God. So therefore, one of the things that needs to be a sin uh, by the Lord in us at any uh, situation, at any circumstance, is that you should not get panicked uh, because I've seen people who are panicking and uh, sometimes even their mentality, the way they think, the way they say things, is no longer right uh, because uh, they are very much affected of the circumstance. And here, the Bible tells us that uh, the fruit of the Spirit must be seen in any circumstance wherein we ourselves should be very careful to see those things, how they are being applied in our day-to-day -day life. Do not pray, Lord, give me patience. God, we have, God has already given us the patience. Do not pray, Lord, make me gentle. Uh, make me good. It has been there. All you have to do, Lord, 
give me the grace to apply the truths of the fruit of the Spirit in my life. Because you don't know what you're talking when you say, Lord, uh, give me like this love or joy. You have already that. It is only that how are you able to apply in any situation that you are being controlled by the Holy Spirit of God. So getting back to that, we studied verse 10, the day which are persecuted, godly Christians will experience uh, ill treatment, godly Christians uh, will be insulted, and godly Christians will be indicted uh, for sure. And now here uh, in verses 11 and 12, uh, as uh, we continue, in uh, verse uh, 11, and 12, they that revile and persecute and accuse. In other words, they that revile, uh, okay, and uh, it says accused and persecuted. Uh, in verse 11, it says, Blessed are they that were, uh, blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say manner of evil against you falsely and then it says for my sake or my name's sake that is the very key regardless of what has been stated so the lord himself is re reminding us that people are going to be reviled the word reviled is that those who are going to fight, those who have contentions against you, those who uh, would not be nice to you, so that you would understand. Are there people in our offices where you work at? Are there people surroundings, neighbors, whoever may, wherever you go, who do not treat you well? There are. But much more if they know that you are a Christian much more if they know that you are a believer and a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. I do hope and I pray, even most probably you do not share much your faith uh, to your fellow laborers and fellow employees in the work, but at least it is my uh, assumption that they know you that you are a Christian in the first place. That means you're not just an ordinary person. You are a child of God. So they have their principles. We have our own principles. We have different principles the way we should live. And that is to be expected. And uh, to those who are going to be reviled and to those who are going to be persecuted are those people who, let me tell you this, who live godly. So if your life is unruly, if your life is very carnal, and if the flesh dominate in your Christian life, then this verse for a while is not applied to you, even though you are a child of God. Because how the enemy, and including his emissaries, and even the unsaved people, would revile or make contentions against you when you are corrupt and when you are a compromiser. Definitely you're dancing with your dances. And so there's no way that you can expect that they would revile you. I would like to tell you that so that you would understand. Because in a situation wherein uh, uh, they would say something against you, it's because of your, at moment of your attitude and your behavior at that particular point of time has never been appropriate, has never been acceptable. That's why they accuse you. But what the Bible is telling here, the people who are going to be reviled and to be accused, are those who are consistent in their Christian life, in the standards that they live with. And it has been marked within their minds and within their hearts. This is the person who has an opposite principles and understanding in the way of my living. So you do not expect people to be nice to you, as we have said. If, again, you live accordingly in accordance to the scripture. But if you are a compromiser, 
Because uh, in Tagalog, ayaw mo may masabi sila sa iyo, you would just keep silent and you would not say stand for that, then you are a compromiser, you are sinning against God. I have to tell you that. And uh, that needs to be known. So, first we talk about the reality. And then the second thing we talk in verse 12 about the rejoicing. Because after all that, the Lord said in verse 12, Rejoice and be, he used this uh, word, exceeding glad. How can you exceed and how can you be overjoyful when people revile and when people at the same time persecute you and when people accuse you falsely? Practically, it seems opposite, isn't it? But that is the expectation of the Lord to the mature and spiritual Christian. Because if you and I are only going to be left of our own without considering the Holy Spirit in our Christian life and without considering the truth and the fruit of the Spirit in our Christian life, I tell you one thing. All of us, we have bad manners and attitude and character including me no one because even paul said oh wretched man that i am the things that i hate to do that do i and the things that i have to do what can i magpagwapo what magpagwapa you might be thinking so spiritual sharing things no you you have to prove yourself between you and god remember the book is all about the eye seeing we are under the eye seeing of our heavenly father don't be uh, pleasers of men. Pag sa tao, tinatago mo attitude mo, but before God, He knows. And that's one thing. That's what we are. And I hope you will learn those principles in life. It is not of your education. It is not of your brilliancy. It is not of your good and highest moral standard. It is all about the Holy Spirit that is in you, that has given you the spirit of fruits of the Spirit, that needs to be used regularly every day in our Christian life, though we are sinners saved by grace. We were given of these things already. So, what is the reality? He said, uh, he is still happy are those who were persecuted, happy are those uh, not only persecuted, who reviles. Number one, okay. The reality is that to cause strife against you, there are people who would really meant it to cause trouble or strife or contentions against you because they don't like you. They don't like your standards. They don't like the way you live. They don't like what you believe about the Lord. Sometimes, just sharing Jesus Christ to them about salvation, that they need Jesus because He's the only way. They won't even like it. People are sarcastic and they would refuse. And they would just laugh at you. Uh, it is our experience for so many years when we knock on door to door or even giving some uh, tracts um, to the people and try to explain to them. And they would say, what is this for? Is this money or ticket that would bring me somewhere else and make me rich? And you never get started yet, and yet they were sarcastic. And they don't want to be in line with what you're trying to tell. But that also wherein your, your, your emotions can be tested by the Lord. Sometimes you just smile and tell them, it's more than money that you think. And it's more than blessings that you think. And um, you want me to share it with you at least for three or five minutes? And they something, oh, if I have time and so on. So they would stop. At least you never show to them in return a rude attitude. Hindi yung pagbinigyan mo, ayaw mo tanggapin, bahala ka, mamatay ka sana. Okay? You don't have that kind of attitude. Uh, share it. So in Proverbs uh, chapter 17, uh, verse 19 and 20, uh, Proverbs uh, ch chapter 17 verse 19 and 20 it says 
He loveth transgressions that loveth strife. And he that exalted his gate seeketh distraction. He that had a forward heart, that means unrighteous or wicked, and even takot duat, findeth no good. And he that had a perverse tongue, anong sabi yan? Falleth into mischief. So, the reality, based on what the Lord said, there would be contentions, there would be accusations, they would accuse you falsely at work, nearby, anywhere else, that you and I are experiencing all these things. Even sometimes our own personal loved ones of the things that you never intended to do so, but still within their understanding and capacity, they would accuse you and so on. And if it is not true, just smile. That doesn't necessarily mean you're guilty. At least thank God. In short, sa Tagalog, you've never done it yet. Hindi mo pa nga ginawa, pinagbibintangan ka na. Hindi lalo ka maging maingat. Hmm. E di lalo na kung ginagawa mo. What more if you're uh, doing it and applying it? So, you don't need to get angry. Oh, well, bakala mo, i- sino ka naman and so on. No, sir. Don't, don't try to reason out that way. Because anyone can be used by the enemy. That includes me, that includes you. To revile other people also. If we are not very cautious. And very careful. Uh, no one is excused of this. That's why if we know that we have the Holy Spirit of God. And guided by the Holy Spirit of God. Everything that you say and everything that you do. It should always be within the knowledge and the control of the Holy Spirit. But they would cause uh, strife against you. Secondly, to cause not only strife against you, to, ca- uh, to cause suffering uh, to you because of your religious belief. The word persecute is because of what you stand for the truth. I studied that very carefully. Blessed are they that persecute you. In what manner, in what truth, in what thing that they would persecute you? Not necessarily physical persecution, but even in, uh, in what we call uh, social persecution and mental persecution. When you, uh, that's why when you are a Christian, you don't leave your own standard. I don't leave my own standard. We have the Word of God. That is our standard. The Bible is our blue book. Please don't forget that. God wants us to live accordingly. God wants us to live according to His will. God wants us to live according to His ways. And if you are a devoted child of God, you would consider all these things seriously in your Christian life. And when you do that, that we are to please our Heavenly Father every day, whether therefore you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it for God's glory within your mind and at the back of your mind. Your goal is always that I have to please my God every day, whether at work, whether anywhere else, every day in everything that I do, in everything that I say, in everything that I have to decide, I have to give glory to my Heavenly Father. But the truth of the matter not all Christians are very much conscious of that. Because you do things only on your own understanding. Why is it that King Solomon, one of the wisest men that ever lived, wrote it in Proverbs, which is very well known in 3, 5, uh, five and 6. Um, you don't need to trust to your own ability or understanding. But in all thy ways, acknowledge him or depend and let him know. And the Bible says, God is very willing to direct your paths. You know why many times you live in a life wherein you're so confused, you're so worried, a lot of things do that and so on. I even advise one of our friends now in the Philippines. You see, it has been my, my understanding in life, and I, I really applied it, and I thank God, having food and raiment, it means to say that if you are being... Um, given and being provided by the Lord faithfully every day in comparison to other people around the world 
I would say you are more blessed. What more in life that you need to be confused and to be complained and to murmur and to get worried? We did study in the past. You want to be blessed? You want to prosper? There's nothing wrong about it. We studied that already. I don't need to get back on that. Only what the Bible tells us and even the Lord Jesus Christ tell us that you should not be, I would say, greedy. You should not be covetous. And even Paul said, the love of money is the root of all evil. But I guarantee you, you would agree with me. There's not even an inch that God has forgotten and God has left you alone of your situation. He has ever been faithful in meeting your needs and taking care of you and taking care of me. But are there not times you are still worried about a lot of things? You know why? Because you never left, you never reached that maturity yet that you are being uh, provided by the Lord of your day-to-day -day needs. If you would just open your eyes wide around the world, you are more blessed than anyone else. And yet, you see uh, your selfishness in life. Your self-centeredness in life. Where is your God that you say He's very good? Why is it that you're always getting worried? Even if there are some accusations around when you do what is right before God. See? So, they cause you to suffer because of what you believe. How can you expect them to be in one with you and to be in harmony with you when their standards is different to your standards unless you compromise? <coughs> right? I tease one person in the Philippines. I told her, okay, I can just get the paper in three days in the Philippines. And that is corruption. But if you just allow it, how it's going to work? At least 10 to 14 days before papers gonna be released. I'm talking, for example, about uh, title or the properties. And you know exactly when when people are in line of their standards, you can never hear something wrong against them. They would never even accuse you. So they would cause you sorry. In First Peter chapter three, what did it say? First Peter chapter three. It says uh, in verses thirteen to uh, twelve to fifteen. Twelve to fifteen. It says here for the eyes of the lord are over the righteous and his ears look at that are open unto their prayers you have troubles you have problems are you worried are you confused god's eyes and god's ears are open for you and for me my beloved sister and brother in the lord and he says but the face of the lord is against them what the do evil and who is he that will harm you, it says, if you be followers of that which is good, but and if you suffer for righteousness sake. Remember, that's what the Lord said. Happy are ye or blessed you are, the same word that has been used. And be not afraid of their terror to those who revile you. Okay. Neither be troubled. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. In other words, stay pure. Become always to give and be ready always to give an answer to every man that would even ask you. Reason of hope that is in you. How are you going to do it? Still the fruit of the Spirit in meekness and in fear. So I would say, for example, they falsely accuse you. You know exactly 100%. Absolutely, it's lie. All lies. You know, the emotion would immediately, boom! 
and you would say a lot of words that you never even considered. You would even say things that you never even prayed, and you have forgotten the Holy Spirit is within you, and so therefore, you are just like a fool person. In the first place, that is what we call disgrace before our Heavenly Father and the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit is in you. So, and many Christians are very much guilty of that. When your emotions uh, just corrupt, uh, erupted, wala na kayong kinikilalang salita ng Panginoon. You don't care about the Word of God anymore. Don't forget, you're not an ordinary person. So they would cause you to suffer. And prepare yourself of that. You will be suffering emotionally. You will be suffering intellectually. That's what I'm saying. The word persecution is not physical, though there are some physical things. Thirdly, to cause you not only to strike against you, to cause a suffering to, uh, you, uh, to you because of your religious belief, to cause you sharp, false accusation of your being. In other words, to cause you, uh, to cause sharp, false accusation of your being. Yung pagkataong na, your whole being, not just the standards. Here you can see, beloved, there's no use of, of being proud and bragging about how many degrees you have above your head, your wealth above uh, that you have, and so on. We're not talking here about how well off you are. We're not talking here about how brilliant and how intelligent you are. We're not talking here about uh, certain things about your standard because it is the duty of these people who revile and, and uh, persecute and accuse you falsely. And yet Jesus said, look, for my sake or for my name's sake. So, what the Lord was trying to say, if you would just follow me, and you do exactly what I'm expecting you to do, the way that I have given to you the Word of God, then expect persecution, because even Paul wrote, okay, that uh, you and I were called not only to uh, be saved by the Lord, but also to suffer persecution for Christ's sake. And if you are not persecuted, ba'y mag-isip-isip ka? Kristiyano ka ba? Sabi nga ng kapampangan niya, murin. Pareho rin. Wala rin pinakitang pagbabago. Kasi gusto mo, mabango ka sa lahat eh. Okay, okay, nakikiaayong ka. See, you never tell them what you stand for. So, lady that I thought this morning I shared the gospel with what Brother Lee bought and I said if you have time can I just give you oh this is the office pastor okay but can you please come over to our church if you have the time you know give all the opportunities they know I'm a pastor and so on I'm not perfect you are not perfect but at least they know we have Christ in us we are Christians that's one thing. Uh, don't be hesitate. Uh, hesitate this. And at the same time, don't be ashamed. I remember what Paul said in, that was in Romans 1.16, isn't it? For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to the Jew first and then to the Greeks or to the Gentiles. I am not ashamed of the gospel. Masaya kayo sa trabaho, you're happy at work. Do they know you're a Christian? Were you trying your best and effort to share the gospel to them? And yet, you say, oh, I'm okay, no problem. My friend, you're not okay. Because the Lord said you have to share the gospel. You know how many times I keep on pushing you this? Because it is the Lord's will. And it is the Lord's command. And I hope God's people in Mount Olives would be 
a weekend of the fact that you and I are missionaries ourselves and mouthpiece for God, for the salvation of people. So they cause you to uh, they uh, to cause sharp false accusation of your being in First uh, Peter chapter three. Again, First Peter chapter three, verse sixteen to eighteen. Uh, having a good conscience that where I will ask they speak evil of you as of you see they speak evil of you as what what you're doing is not right it's bad still evil doers that they may be ashamed that falsely the same word that Peter probably he was reminded of what Christ was telling them accuse you your good conversation the word conversation is the way you live the manner of life in christ for it is better if the will of god be so that you suffer for well doing than for evil doing di bali mag suffer ka dahil sa katotohanan hindi dahil sa kabalbalan mo it's because of uh, you you are a compromiser you're a corrupt and you don't want to be uh, known by the people that you have standard to live with. For Christ also had suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. So that is the reality. You and I are going uh, to cause a strife, suffer and to be sharply accused now the rejoicing what did it say in verse 12 because we're gonna finish this it says in verse 12 rejoice and be exceeding glad i like that for great is your reward in heaven temporal at material Okay? We're not talking of money and blessing here. In Matthew 6.33, those are the temporal things here. But here is all about in eternity. Were you able to invest good things for your eternity? About that? Have you considered that? So he says, For great is your reward in heaven. It is very clear. And so he said, Reminder again, For so persecuted they the prophets, which were before you. He was talking about the Old Testament saints, particularly major and minor prophets who preaches the word of God. One example, Jeremiah, even before he preached, even before he obeyed God, he knew that he would be rejected. He knew that he would be persecuted. He knew that he would be put to death. Isaiah, before he preached, he knew that he would be rejected by the people. And then in Isaiah 53, who's going to believe our report? He knew that. But even then, the Lord said, even if no one believed, just go on because I'm telling you to do it. And you know what happened to Isaiah? They put him to death. They did also to Jeremiah and other major and minor prophets. So the Lord said, these people are doing God's will because they stood for it. So they suffered not only persecution, even cost their lives. You know, there is now a law in Canada. It was just passed last uh, week or two weeks ago. And there were already pastors who were arrested. That if you're going to speak against, okay, LGBT, in the pulpit, the government himself would be the one to bring you behind the bars. It is a law. They don't care about the church. They don't care about the faith of the people who are also their uh, who, residents of Canada and citizens of Canada who are Christians. But they favored some others. As you also know here in America back then, if you're not going to marry both sexes, 
they can even accuse you and bring you to the court. That has been known. There were already pastors in Canada. One has been sentenced for six years because she preached and he teach about that. We live in the world today wherein the world is getting worse. But thank be to the Holy Spirit who restrains people so that sin can be maging malala. It won't become uh, terrible. But time would come. All of us are going to be hated and to be rejected by these people who do not believe in the truth and who do not believe in God. You have to prepare yourself. Brother Ben is speaking about the end times that's going to happen literally um, in the tribulation period in the midst of that, after that. But even today, it is already being uh, prepared and many Christians are also affected around the world. So the reality, three things. Number one, the Lord said, if you are persecuted, falsely accused, and people contend with you, they fight against you, they make strife against you, they destroy your being and your reputation, the Lord's encouragement and recommendation, rejoice. And not only rejoice, exceedingly joy, boy, joyful. How is that? It's opposite, isn't it? Now, let me ask you. Would you believe and follow Jesus? Or would you just believe your mind and your feelings? And your emotions? Unless you have grown enough of your faith in Christ and in God. It means to be happy and truly thankful. Because if it did happen in the olden times, and these were people who were so devoted and dedicated to God and were determined to continue what God, as what Paul also said in the book of uh, uh, Timothy, that he told Pastor Timothy, I have, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept my faith. And then he said, there is something that is laid out for me, the crown of righteousness that's exactly what the Lord said great is your reward in heaven you know if you think life here is more joyful because you can buy what you're gonna buy you have a lot of money or you have a lot of investments then that's the best thing here I guess you don't understand your life Read Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 to 3. If you then be risen with Christ, okay, think not on the things on earth, but the things in heaven. That's very clear. That must be your thinking. Eh, wala. Sakop ka pa rin ng sanlibutan. Kaya you, you treasure so much what you have. And it's hard for you to be... Uh, not only to be generous in helping other people, not only for the work of God, because you thought, this is my life here. My friend, if you're going to live here even for 70 to 90 years, that is only a short time. Do the thing that God is going to allow you to do and to have. And he said in Romans 8, 18, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Hindi ka pa ba nagpapasalamat? God has provided and you are doing well by God's grace. And yet, you have no... And exactly what Christ was telling was true. Man's life is not satisfied or consistent in the abundance that he has. Hindi niya sinabing wala ka eh. Yung kasaganaan mo, wala ka pa rin satisfaction. And if you are satisfied, I'll tell you what. Here is the truth. God will prosper that what you have now more than what you have thought of. Even here. And that is Matthew 6.33.
many people and many Christians experience that. I personally experience that. And that's why, why that you cannot give your life truly to God and serve faithfully to God. In 1 Thessalonians 5.18, in everything, what? Give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Secondly, to be happy and treasure the truth. Because the truth is that if you live godly for Christ, you're also going to be persecuted. And Jesus said in John 8, I guess, 32, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You know what does it mean? Did they accuse you? Are they reviling? Are they persecuting you? I'll tell you what, from the Bible, as it has been said, that's no longer new. That won't be surprising you. That's exactly what Jesus is telling you. Hindi ka masurpresa. Why? Because it has been stated from, the Lord said, it has been done to the prophets. It has been done to our fathers back then. And it is happening until the coming back of Jesus Christ. It is. And that's exactly in Romans, in, in the book of Ecclesiastes said, it is a life cycle. The same thing. So what in the world that you would be amazed of? Ay, hindi ko alam ganyan pala. My friend, you study very carefully the word of God. And that's why when you are not mentally prepared and emotionally prepared, small thing immediately affect you and you become so worried and confused and you don't even know what to do. Alam mo yung salitang hindi lang nalulungkot, natataranta ka, hindi mo alam kung anong gagawin mo. Because you are not so much yet matured up spiritually from the Word of God. Last, not only to be happy and truly thankful, Christ said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You have to treasure it. To be happy and truthful of your testimony. It means, if there was persecution, if there was reviling, if there was false accusation, that would only show that you are a child of God. That is a testimony. And I end on this verse in Philippians chapter 2. It says in Philippians chapter 2, You were even reminded and warned by Apostle Paul in chapter 2, verses 12 to 16. It says in verse 12, Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Continue. The work out means keep on going. Work out your own salvation with great respect and humility. Trembling here speaks of humility. For it is God, now you know, it is God, which doing that, work it in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Do all things huh? without murmurings and disputings, not to other people, but even to yourself. Do not complain, do not murmur before God. Do not reason out against God. Why, Lord, and so on? It is God's will. Verse 15 and 16, for last, what would be you that you may be blameless and harmless? The sense of God without accusations, the without rebuke. You know how he called the world? In the midst of a crooked and perverse world or nation. Among whom, Matthew 5, 16, shine as lights in the world. Then he said, holding forth, keep on embracing, keep on living, 
keep on showing the word of life. And Paul said, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. To be happy and truthful of your testimony. Are you persecuted? Are you reviled? Do they accuse you falsely? Okay. Don't be amazed. And don't get surprised. It is natural. That's why I said those two verses are only applied for those who try to put put more effort to live a godly life for God's glory. And that is all about that. Then we're going to go to the great expectation of the Lord. You are the salt of the earth by next week. May God bless us. Christians should sincerely and humbly live accordingly so as to be acceptable and pleasing to God. Live sincerely and humbly accordingly so that your life and my life would be acceptable and pleasing to God. May God bless us all. Again, thank you so much for your prayers. And I'm doing well so fast. And we praise God for that. Let's give the glory to God. Group 2 again, please don't forget. Bring the food this coming Sunday. Please come early this coming Sunday. Friday, Bible study to Culver uh, to the Omali family. And thank you so much for those who are going there. Okay, God bless us all. Uh, Brother Lloyd, dismiss us in order of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you this evening for a prayer meeting. Thank you for the lesson that you taught us, Lord, to, to just uh, ignore the ways of the world as long as we live our life that is pleasing to you, Lord, and follow the things that you have taught us, Lord. And we pray also for uh, our brethren, Lord, um, brothers and sisters with health needs that you um, look after them, Lord, during this time, and also uh, thank you for those um, brothers and sisters that uh, have since recovered, and mm -hmm. we pray for this week, Lord, that you guide us and protect us, and bring us uh, this Friday, Lord, to cover for our Bible study, Lord, and may you yes, Lord. Um, speak to the heart and mind of Brother Lee, Lord, as whatever um, lesson you want to uh, teach him, Lord, to share with us, Lord, that may it be something uh, to bless each and every one of us, Lord, and we thank you uh, for your blessings, Lord, for your guidance and protection. May you bring us once again, Lord, in your house of worship this Sunday. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> thank you for the opportunity to speak to you, Lord, and also to our brothers and sisters in the live stream, Lord. And may you give us rest, Lord, for the following uh, day and the rest of the week. Please do that. Please say amen. Amen. Good night, and God bless you all. Have a good night's sleep.